The cool thing about winning the Stanley Cup for the Hockey Hall of Fame is each year, team donates a real Stanley Cup ring to us. What was special this year, and all you guys know how special your St. Louis Blues are, and it shows you what the team means to the city and what the city means to the sport. For the first time ever, the entire St. Louis Blues roster, <coughs> their GM, their coaches, their equipment managers, their trainers, their owner, came to the Hockey Hall of Fame to donate that. We have never had a team, entire team, come before. This year, we had the day all marked. The Blues were playing the Leafs the night before. The Blues won, and the fans were all waiting, and the entire team walks in. And they, I'm not sure if anyone was here, but they were blown away because everybody was there. The whole team wandered through the hall, and it was pretty special. And that goes from Tom Stillman all the way down. Everybody was there. So you'll see them all gathered around there, the, all the players. Uh, there we are doing the presentation, and there there's the guys looking at all the rings. So we have rings dating from 1893 all the way up to this one. Jay Bowman's through this year, first time he wins the Stanley Cup. <laughs> the cool thing about Jay Bowmeister is he's now a member of the Triple Gold Club. And for those of you who don't know what that is, he is the 29th player in the history of the game to win the Stanley Cup, a world championship for his country, and an Olympic medal for his country. So to put it in perspective, there's been over a million people that have played the game. Uh, a lot have gone on to play in the National Hockey League, have played for their country at world championships, have played for the Olympics. You have to be, you have such a career that you can win the Stanley Cup with a great team, but to win the world championships in the NHL, your team has to get also eliminated early on in the playoffs so you can represent your country. Jay has done that with Florida and early St. Louis teams. So he went on to win the gold there, and he won the gold with the Olympics as well. So of everybody that's ever played, he became the 29th player to win that. So this year, right before the team photo in the dressing room, I did a little presentation in front of all the players. And for those of you who might not know Jay, he doesn't speak a lot. <laughs> so I'm giving this whole speech about a million players are playing and everything, and players have no idea what I'm talking about. And they get up, and then finally, as they get down, they start cheering for Jay Bo, Jay Bo. And he gets up. We hand them this gold pen that there's only 29 of. He looks at it, he goes, that's cool, and he sits down. And that was it. <laughs> and they're, they're all screaming, J-Bo, J-Bo still. So later on in the summer, uh, Tiso made him a, a special watch that there's only 29 of them that they're engraved on there as well. And Alex presented that to him the night they got their Stanley Cup ring as well. So pretty cool feat for a, a great guy. Here's in the dressing room. <laughs> That night, uh, there's Scott, your team photographer, taking photos. I'm standing here, trying to be dry, watching what's going on. I was okay. I was not bad. Uh, once we got in the van to go to the airport, that became another story. And then once we're on the plane, that was another story as well. So the cool thing about what's happened the week you win the Stanley Cup is obviously there's a whole bunch of pandemonium going on in the dressing room. We, we fly back to uh, St. Louis. I think we arrived at 4 o'clock or something. It's pouring down. And as we pull in, there's like thousands of fans waiting there. And I'm thinking, holy crap. <laughs> we're, we're, we're three hours into the cup, and there's thousands of fans, and it's pouring down. The great thing about the St. Louis Blues hockey team they knew right away that your city was just as important to winning that cup as those players on the ice. They walked off the plane, walked right to that crowd, and I remember Colton Friaco being in there, and you know he's 6'5", or 6'6", six, six, or 6'7", six, whatever he is. He's holding it up, and the fans are all cheering, and they're pouring down. But I thought, this is going to be a pretty cool summer. And that was night one. So from there, we went back to the arena, came here, uh, I think we went to Alex's house, to Vlad's house, then we went to O.B. Clark's. That was my first time at O.B. Clark's. I'm not sure if everyone has been there before. So we're on that little patio deck thing with 
I don't know, I, I remember seeing a sign that says it holds 300. That's, that's wrong. <laughs> it holds a lot more than 300. <laughs> the cool thing about St. Louis this year, I, th I think there was 19 members of the uh, St. Louis Blues Stanley Cup champions that were Canadians. I think there was 13 players, coaching staff, GM, goaltending coach. We went to eight provinces. Here we are in Saskatchewan here. Three Saskatchewan guys. The neat thing about a Stanley Cup winning team, and through my experience, I can look at a roster. You find a team that has a guy from Saskatchewan, a guy from Quebec, there's a pretty good chance that team's gonna win. Something to do with Saskatchewan water, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Saskatchewan guys always win. So there was three of them. They went to the Saskatchewan Rough Rider game in their St. Louis Blues jerseys. They walked out on the field. They took their jerseys off. They all had football jerseys on. Uh, they had all crowds downtown Regina. There we are making, I'm pretty sure, margarita. this is the first margarita that <laughs> I've seen made out of the Stanley Cup. <laughs> but the cool thing about it is anyone can make a margarita in a cup. To put the cup upside down and make sure it's rimmed as well, <laughs> that's pretty cool. <coughs> to me, this was the best day this summer. We were in Callahoo, Alberta. Yeah. We were with Callahoo, Alberta with Chief Craig Bruby. Not sure if everyone knows this, but every person gets a day with a cup on the team. The captain gets two days. The coach gets two days. The GM gets two days and the owner gets whatever he wants. <laughs> so Craig had two days. His first day was in Callahoo, Alberta. He started off the Stanley Cup tour this year in northern Alberta. We started in western Canada and we went right across the country. He's a First Nations Indian. He took it back to his Indian reservation. Uh, Callahoo is a population of 75 people. Apparently that day, 7,500 people showed up. <laughs> And the police were telling us that it's the first time ever they've had a traffic jam. They don't have stoplights, they don't have a stop sign. They have a hockey rink, they got a baseball diamond, they got a bingo hall, they got one store. And they got the Bruby Meat Factory. So they were at the rink, I think we were at the rink for five hours. Craig got photos with every person that came through. Then we went to the Bruby farm. And we got a big bonfire going and, you know, parties going on. And this old gentleman walks up. And I'm not sure if anyone knows who this is, but this is the first player ever signed by the St. Louis Blues, Glenn Hall. He lives half an hour from where Craig was. I'm not sure if anybody at the party realized it was Glenn Hall. And I'm sitting there on a picnic table, and I look up and think, holy crap, that's Glenn Hall. <laughs> so I talked to Glenn, and the next day we're going from I think we're going from Craig's to Colton Friaco's house. I get an email from Glenn's son, Pat. Hey Phil, Dad said he uh, was at Craig's party yesterday, but he doesn't remember talking to you. He just wants to apologize if he didn't. That's how classy Glenn Hall is. <laughs>